Hello everybody. In previous lecture, uh, we started to learn how we can uh, describe or realize uh, discrete time systems and transfer functions using logarithm techniques. Okay, we start with the fundamentals such as the uh, delay block and uh, importance of delay block and it's associated with the memory size of the system. And then uh, we move on to special cases uh, such that we uh, realized FIR and IIR systems where numerator dynamics is static. Okay, so these were special cases and we derived minimal realizations for these two uh, cases. Okay, then we uh, start to learn how we can generalize this uh, for, for a general transfer function, which is not a special case. For example, here, we have a third order transfer function. Uh, it has five coefficients, b0, b1, b2, b3, a1, a2, a3, okay? And we want to realize it, and possibly with the minimum uh, amount of delay elements, okay? So this is a direct programming, and we uh, learned this at the end of the uh, lecture. Uh, it's a correct realization, but the problem is, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six delay elements. The meaning is we have uh, six memory blocks and order of the realization is six, but order of the transfer function is three. This is not minimal and this is uh, not we want exactly uh, in a uh, well-defined canonical realization. Okay, now in this lecture, we will we'll learn how we can transform this direct program realization into a minimal form by using graphical techniques. In the lecture notes, uh, I uh, explain the behavior from a mathematical perspective, but today's lecture, uh, the video lecture, will emphasize on the graphical techniques, which will be easier to understand. Okay, so what we can do? First of all, uh, this program representation is kind of uh, hard to manipulate. So what I will do is, I will transform, not transform, I'll just rotate this part 90 degrees, to have a better understanding of the picture. Okay, just rotate that. If you rotate it, we will obtain this, okay? So from this to this, nothing has changed. I just rotated the uh, block down structure such that the left and right part have a, a similar uh, format. Okay, so we have three delay elements here, three delay elements here. Okay, good, no, no problem. So what we can do this, okay, so this is our first part of the dynamics, okay? And this is the, so let's change it, second part of the dynamics, okay? Very good, okay? Let's call it G1 and call it G2. So technically these are two different uh, block diagram structures uh, connected with a cascade or series structure, okay? So since this is a linear time invariant system, I can move this block diagram structure to here, and I can move the other block diagram structure to here, just changing the order, okay? Instead of this, uh, the first one, the second one will be the uh, new uh, first block diagram that will filter the x. So overall, input output dynamics between x and y will be same. Of course, internal dynamics, some details can be different, but this is the whole idea of Block diagram manipulation. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, if we do that, uh, this is the resulting. But now, as you can see, we have a better understanding of the uh, block diagram structure and it will be much easier for us to uh, reduce the delay elements because, okay, so this is x of k, this is y of k. Let's assume that this is h of k. It's an intermediate signal. Okay, so this is the delay element, this is the delay element, and they're operating on the same input and producing the same input. Let's assume that this is h k minus 1. This will be h k minus 2, and here it will be h k minus 3. I really don't need two parallel delay elements, so I can get rid of all of these. I can get rid of these signals. So what I can do, just connect them like this. Okay. So what I have, I have exactly the same input of the dynamics because 
uh, I just eliminated a redundant block. But what I have is it has three delay elements or three memory elements. And we know that this is a third order transfer function, which means that this uh, now reduced manipulated block diagram structure is a minimal representation. Okay, let's look at the final picture. It looks like this. Okay, it is a very nice, well defined, compact block diagram structure. Input here, this is an intermediate variable. These are also all intermediate variables. And this is the output. We have three z to the power minus one blocks, which means that this is a third order minimal realization of the transfer function. Okay, so in the textbook, this is called a standard programming technique. I also call it canonical realization. Why I call it canonical realization? Because uh, later in the state space uh, lectures, uh, we will use this program structure and assign the states of the system as h of k, h of k minus one, h of k minus two. Okay, we will form a state space representation and it will be in controllable canonical 